In this video, I want to look at the Euler product definition of the gamma function. And the Euler product uh, definition of the gamma function looks like this. It says that gamma of z is equal to 1 over z times the infinite product, for n equal 1 to infinity, of 1 plus 1 over n to the z divided by 1 plus z over n. And this formula is really, I mean, there's, there's already a whole lot you can learn from this formula because one thing you see instantly is that uh, there are going to be poles in this function. So, so this, this function is going to have one over zeros occurring at integer values of z less than or equal to zero. And so, so just, just from this formula right here, you learn something interesting about the gamma function for negative values. So, so, that, so that, that's why this formula is so cool. Um, but how do we actually show this is true? Well, I'm going to do it first by proving that the following limit is true. What I want to show is that a limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial n plus 1 to the m, m over n plus m factorial. Uh, I want to show, first of all, that this limit is equal to 1. And, and you may be you know, wondering why I'm looking at this limit first, uh, but you know, it, it, it'll all make sense uh, in, in a moment. So, all right. So, so, so first things first. How how do we know that this limit's actually true? Uh, well, uh, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to start off uh, with a limit that I definitely know is true. I definitely know that n plus m factorial divided by n plus m factorial. You know, I, I definitely know that this is equal to one. Um, I definitely know that that's equal to one. Um, but I can rewrite this. I can rewrite this by introducing an n factorial like we have there. And I can write it as n factorial over n plus m factorial times n plus m factorial over n factorial. All right, you know, no, no, nothing mystery, nothing, nothing mysterious here. Um, but what I'm going to do now is notice that, well, wait a minute, we're looking at very large n and very large n for the gamma function. And so what that means is that uh, we can approximate this using Stirling's formula. And you may recall from last time that what uh, Stirling's formula is this. It says that for, for n factorial, for large values of n, uh, this is approximately given by root 2 pi n, n over e to the n. So we can substitute that in here. And what we get is that uh, this limit becomes n factorial over n plus m factorial times, all right, and then, then what do we have? We're going to have root 2 pi n plus m times n plus m over e raised to the n plus m uh, divided by root 2 pi n times n over e raised to the n. Okay, so here I've just substituted in Stirling's formula for n plus m factorial over n factorial. Uh, now notice that we can simplify this a lot. So one thing that we can see is that, uh, so our two pi's will cancel out, um, but also this n, the square root n plus m over n uh, will also go to one in the limit where n goes to infinity because this is going to be square root of one plus m over n with n going to infinity. And so this whole thing right here will go to one. Um, we can also simplify these terms right here uh, and so let's do that. If we simplify them, then what do we get? We get that uh, this becomes limit n going to infinity n factorial over n plus m factorial. And what's this become? This becomes uh, this becomes n plus m to the n plus m over n to the n e to the minus m, right? Because we have a and e to the minus m up here, and then these e to the n's cancel out. And so we're left with this. Uh, we, can, we can go one step further by uh, moving this n to the n inside uh, this argument, inside this, these parentheses right here, by writing this as e to the n plus m minus m, which we can write as just n to the m up top. And so this becomes equal to uh, limit n going to infinity same n factorial over n plus m factorial. And then we have, we have what? One plus m over n raised to the n plus m 
times n to the m e to the minus m. Okay, uh, but notice that uh, in the limit where n is going to infinity, uh, this term right here, this 1 plus m over n uh, raised to the n plus m, uh, th this is going to be equal to in that limit e to the m, right? That that's, this is this is just the uh, if we ignore this m right here in the in the exponent, this is just the limit definition of e to the m, and then in the limit as n large, uh, this m right here can be ignored, uh, and so this will become e to the m. It'll cancel out with that e to the minus m, and what we're left with uh, is almost what we want: limit n going to infinity n factorial over n plus m factorial times n to the m. All right, so this is almost what we want, right? So from the get-go, we wanted to prove uh, this limit right here. And this is almost that limit, but we don't have n to the n plus 1 to the m. We just have n to the m. But in the limit where n goes to infinity, uh, these two are going to be exactly the same, right? Because that, that one's going to be ignored, and so this will just be the same as limit n to the m, uh, or n, n plus 1 to the m, then going to infinity. And so, uh, and so we see that... This right here will be the exact same as this limit up here, uh, and so we've done it. We, we've we've shown that. So we've done it. We've shown that uh, this whole guy right here uh, is equal to one. Just just by starting off by saying that you know th this trivial thing is equal to one in in that limit, and then using Stirling's formula. Okay. So what have we been doing so far? We've been saying that all right. You know, here's a limit defined in terms of the ordinary everyday factorial function. And so what that means is that this m right here, because it's showing up in the factorial function, has to be an integer. Um, but I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to say, all right, let's say we're not working with the ordinary factorial function anymore. Let's say that we're extending the factorial function to complex arguments. So like a half or i or, or, or any, anything like that. Uh, in that case, then what do we have? We have that... No, so so I'll, I'll rewrite m as z. Uh, in that case, we have that limit uh, and going to infinity n factorial n plus 1 to the z over n plus z factorial is equal to 1. Um, and then what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by z factorial. And if we do that, then we get that z factorial. So a generalized uh, factorial for complex arguments is equal to the limit n going to infinity n factorial z factorial so so put pulling in that z n plus 1 to the z over n plus z factorial okay and we can simplify this right here a little bit uh, so we can notice that uh, this right here if we expand it out a little bit is going to be equal to uh, this will be equal to, and I'll, I'll write out a couple terms, limit n going to infinity. So this n factorial will, will roughly look like uh, 1 times 2 times 3 dot 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 all the way up to n. That's just the factorial. Uh, in the denominator, what will we have? Well, we have z factorial divided by n plus z factorial. And so because of that, because of what we know about the factorial function, um, terms from each of those are going to cancel out. And what we'll be left with in the bottom is 1 plus z times 2 plus z uh, times 3 plus z dot 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 all the way up to n plus z. Right, because this is, this is n plus z factorial. And then we can use the recurrence relationship all the way down until we're left with just z factorial and then those two will cancel out. Uh, so we have that. Uh, then, the only thing we have left is this term right here, uh, n plus 1 to the z. Um, but I want to rewrite that as well. And the way that I want to rewrite it is like this. I want to say that um, n plus 1 to the z. So that, that, that's the same as n plus 1 over n times n. Right? So, so you know, we'll multiply it by 1. We can multiply it by 1 again. And we can go all the way down. All the way down until we get... Uh, to 1. 3 minus 2 times 2 over 1, right? So, I mean, really what we're just doing here is multiplying uh, 1 a whole bunch of times, you know, I mean, and that, that's, that's a sort of complicated way of writing this, but it, it's exactly equivalent uh, to n plus 1, n plus 1 raised to the z. Okay, uh, we have this big limit right here, but now notice that everything right here shows up as a product. We have a bunch of, uh, a product up to n right here, a product of n terms right here, 
And then another product of n terms right here. We have 2 over 1, 3 over 2, all the way up to n plus 1 over n. And so what that means is that we can write this whole thing right here as an infinite product. And what is that infinite product equal to? Well, it's going to be product. Uh, I'll write it n equals 1 to infinity. So putting that limit up, up there. Uh, and then what? Well, notice that these, th this term out in front, for, for each 1 plus z, we have a 1 up top. Or, or 2 plus z, we have a 2. 3 plus z, we have a 3. And so we can divide each of these terms right here in the denominator by 1 or 2 or 3. Uh, and what we get is that uh, it'll be equal to uh, to 1 plus z over n, right? So that's just taking this n factorial and dividing the new, uh, the denominator by it. And then these, this term right here, well, first off, each of these individual factors, 2 over 1, 3 over 2, uh, those can be written as n plus 1 over n, also known as 1 plus 1 over n. Uh, and so we can write this as 1 plus 1 over n to the z. And we've just about done it, right? So this is this is um, this is almost exactly identical uh, to what we wanted to prove right here for the gamma function. But um, this is this is this is for the this is exact for the factorial function. So this is exactly equal to z factorial. If we want it to be equal to the gamma function, uh, then then what do we have to remember? We have to remember that um, gamma of n plus one is equal to n factorial. And gamma, gamma of n plus 1 is also equal to n gamma of n. So gamma of n is equal to n factorial divided by n. Uh, for z, it's going to be uh, z factorial divided by z. And so we get that gamma of z is equal to 1 over z times this exact guy right here. Product n equals 1 to infinity. Uh, 1 plus 1 over n to the z over 1 plus z over n. And we've done it. It was a lot of work, um, but we were able to show that starting with this this funny limit right here, which we didn't we didn't understand initially why we were interested in it. But by starting from that, using Sterling's formula, uh, we were able to basically just let one equal one, multiply one by z factorial because that, that's a great way to get z factorial, and then we were able to simplify it such that we got this product form right here. Uh, and so we, so we've done it. We've we've got a a new a new way of writing an extension to the factorial function. Um, now, you might be asking yourself, well, wait a minute, you know, the gamma function I know is an integral. It's an integral from 0 to infinity, you know, x to the z minus 1, e to the minus x dx. And it's not exactly clear how this uh, product right here is related to that. Well, in the next video, what I'm going to do is, is, is provide an argument for why uh, this infinite product right here is exactly the same as that, uh, is exactly the same as that integral. Um, and, then, and then you'll be confident in saying that uh, this gamma function right here as a product is exactly the same as the gamma function that we know from the integral definition. Uh, so I hope to see you in that video.